Hello, I'm Brian with The Tenant Company, and in the next few minutes, I will show you the proper startup, use, and end of shift steps for your Tenant T350 stand-on scrubber. Our lawyers wanted me to remind you that while this video will cover the basics, it's your responsibility to read and fully understand the operator's manual and safety labels before using the machine. Let's get started. In my professional opinion, scrubbers are not very effective unless you put some water in them. So let's make sure the solution tank is filled. The fill port is located here on the left-hand side of the machine. Just unscrew the cap and remove any debris found in the solution tank strainer. When filling with a hose, you can insert it into this handy-dandy retainer. It will hold most hoses in place during filling. If you're using any added detergent, be sure to follow the instructions on the product container or dispenser for proper dilution and handling. If, on the other hand, you're using Tenant's EC Water Nano Clean system, just make sure the solution tank is emptied and rinsed of any added detergents prior to filling with plain tap water. As you fill the tank, keep an eye on this clear tube to see when it's time to turn off the hose. Once it's full, just screw the cap back on. Once the solution tank is full, it's also a good idea to verify that your recovery tank is empty. Using quality Tenant True brushes or pads and squeegee blades in good condition helps your machine perform at its best. I mean, really, would you buy an exotic Italian sports car and put cheap bald tires on it? That's a terrible idea. A good daily practice is to inspect and clean the scrub pad or brush. Let's start with the scrub pad. If they appear to be worn, it's time to flip them over or replace them. To change the pad, unscrew the center lock ring to remove the pad. Place the new pad on the pad driver and reattach the center lock ring. If you use brushes, make sure to inspect and clean them by removing any debris caught in the bristles and spraying them down. Start by removing the pad or brush from the machine. There are two optional systems for attaching brushes or pads, the convenient Tenant InstaClick and the standard three lug systems. Let's start with InstaClick. The InstaClick system uses powerful magnets to securely attach brushes or pads to the machine. To release the tools from under the scrub head, simply stand on the operator platform and press the cleaning tool release button. On a pro membrane machine, the button is found here. It's okay to get off the machine once the green light turns solid. On a pro panel machine, the button is found here. Touch the cleaning tool icon on the next screen and wait to get off the platform until you see the check mark. Now you can remove the cleaning tool from underneath the scrub deck. Before attaching the InstaClick cleaning tools, make sure there are no metal fragments on the magnets. Use a dry cloth to wipe them away. To reattach the InstaClick cleaning tools, place the pad driver or brush underneath the scrub deck and lift it off the floor until you hear a click. Now the magic of magnetism will secure the pad or the brush. The other option is the traditional three lug system. To remove the three lug pads or brushes, stand on the platform and press the cleaning tool release button. The scrub deck will raise to its highest level to make it easy to remove the brush or pad driver. The cleaning tool will disengage with a quick tug. To attach the three lug tools, line up the lugs on the cleaning tool with the slots underneath the scrub deck and give it a quick turn. This will keep the cleaning tool in place. The key to great water pickup and a quick drying floor is a properly functioning squeegee. The first step is to remove the squeegee frame from the machine. Removing the squeegee is simple and easy. Start by moving the squeegee all the way to the right side of the machine. Now, remove the back hose. Then, squeeze the quick latch handle and pull the squeegee assembly off the machine. With the squeegee assembly off the machine, first, check for any sharp objects embedded in the squeegee. And then use a damp cloth to wipe down the squeegee blades and clean the squeegee assembly. With the squeegee clean, you can now inspect the squeegee blades for wear or damage. If the squeegee blades show signs of wear or damage, it's time to rotate or replace them. A sure sign that the blades need to be replaced or flipped is when they are worn about halfway through the thickness of the blade. To remove the blades from the assembly, first loosen the star knobs on the squeegee assembly. This will separate the spring-loaded blade retainer from the squeegee frame. Now you can peel off the squeegee blades. To attach the squeegee blades to the frame, align the slots of the blades to the retainer tabs and press the blades in place. With the blades attached to the retainer tabs, you can now compress the springs and tighten the yellow star knobs. To attach the squeegee frame to the machine, grasp the quick latch handle and slide the frame onto the retaining pins of the machine. 
you will also want to make sure your batteries are charged. Our expert engineers, many of whom have master's degrees, tell me that battery-powered scrubbers are approximately 100% less effective with no batteries. So, that's good to know. The charge level will be noted by the battery discharge indicator located here on the Pro Membrane panel and here on the Pro panel. When all the lights are illuminated, the batteries are fully charged. Once it's fully charged, go ahead and unplug the cord and wrap it around the cord hooks. Don't forget, to maximize the runtime and life of the batteries, make sure the batteries are completely charged before using the machine. We know keeping batteries well maintained can be a pain, but it's very important to make sure your batteries perform their best and last as long as possible. If you have sealed batteries, you don't have to worry about this. But for traditional batteries, we recommend checking the battery water levels on at least a weekly basis to make sure the batteries are properly filled with distilled water. The battery is properly filled when the fluid covers the plates inside the battery. Be careful to not overfill the batteries. If your machine is equipped with the optional Smart Fill automatic battery watering system, however, all you have to do is make sure the Smart Fill tank has distilled water in it. When you see this warning icon on your control panel, it's time to fill the tank. Just remove this little tank from the machine, fill it with distilled water, and reinstall. Nothing to it. Do not get mixed up and put detergent in the smart fill tank. You do not want cleaning chemicals going into the batteries. That would be bad. Your scrubber may be equipped with our innovative EC Water NanoClean system. As you may know, EC Water NanoClean is a detergent-free technology that takes plain tap water and applies an electric charge to create an effective cleaning agent that will revert back to water after it's recovered back into the tank. It also uses up to 70% less water, which saves water, but also saves time since you don't have to go back to the closet to dump and refill the machine as often. If your EC Water NanoClean machine is also equipped with the severe environment switch, you can apply detergent on demand to problem areas that may have heavy oils or other soils that require a detergent to clean effectively. Before you start, make sure the severe environment detergent tank is full of your preferred undiluted detergent. To do this, open the access door and pull out the detergent tank. Fill it with detergent and place the tank back into the machine. Be sure to set the dilution ratio knob according to the instructions on your cleaning product. With the solution tank filled and your brush or pad, squeegee, and battery inspections complete, it's time to get cleaning. Before we jump on this thing, it's essential you understand how to operate the control panels. There are two options. First, I will cover the Pro Membrane panel. You'll want to start out by adjusting the cleaning settings to your desired settings. Be sure to work with your supervisor to make sure you understand what settings are appropriate for different environments in your facility. Remember, more isn't always better depending on the flooring, soil levels, and other factors. There are two buttons for down pressure and water flow. This is the down pressure button, and this one is for water flow. In both cases, all you need to do is press the button until you have reached the desired setting. The settings are indicated by the lights below each button. If you have quiet mode, it's great for cleaning sound sensitive areas like healthcare facilities or schools. Press the button and watch for the green light that shows quiet mode is active. Press it again to deactivate. Pressing this big green button raises and lowers the scrub deck. The scrub deck is on the floor when the light in the corner of the button is on. If you need to just pick up liquid, you can press the vac only button. You'll note that some function lights turn off, showing that those functions are not active. Press it again when you want to return to normal function. I mentioned earlier that different environments may require different settings. We make this easy by offering these zone setting buttons. There are two settings that take the guesswork out of cleaning. Activate the presets by simply pressing zone one or zone two. EC Water NanoClean will always be on when you start the machine. If you need to deactivate it on pro membrane machines, Press this button until the green indicator light on the control panel goes off. Press the button again to turn EC Water NanoClean back on. If you're cleaning a small area with tough soils, activate the severe environment function for a 30 second dose of detergent. Simply press this button. The green light blinks slowly at first, then rapidly for the last five seconds of the dose. To turn on a continuous flow of detergent, press and hold the severe environment button for two seconds until the green light turns solid. Press the severe environment button at any time to turn it off. 
If the indicator light is blue and blinking, the detergent tank is empty. The other control panel your machine might have is the Pro Panel, which gives you extra options, including onboard videos that guide you through the operation and maintenance of the machine. Let's check it out. Press either the down pressure icon or the solution flow icon to access adjustment buttons, and then use the plus or minus buttons here and here until you have reached your desired settings. To activate quiet mode, press the icon until the green light is illuminated. You can press it again when you want to return to normal function. Pressing the green one step button raises and lowers the scrub deck. The scrub deck is on the floor when the icon in the green area is white. If you need to just pick up liquid, you can press this vac only button. After pushing the icon, you'll notice that some function lights turn off, showing that these functions are not active. You can press it again when you want to return to normal function. Like the Pro Membrane controls, the Pro Panel has zone setting functionality to pre-program the machine to clean various zones of a building. When you arrive at that zone, simply press the corresponding number and the machine is set to go. As with Pro Membrane machines, if you have EC Water Nano Clean, it will always be on when you start the machine. To deactivate EC Water Nano Clean on Pro Panel machines, press this icon on the panel. The panel will show a line through the icon. Press the icon again to turn EC Water Nano Clean back on. To use the Severe Environment function on a machine with EC Water Nano Clean and Pro Panel, press the Severe Environment icon to dispense detergent for 30 seconds, perfect for a small, heavily soiled area. The icon will turn green and you'll see the 30 seconds count down on a timer. Press and hold the icon for two seconds for continuous dispensing of detergent. Press the icon again to turn off the severe environment function. The icon will blink yellow when the severe environment tank is empty. The Pro Panel features a variety of maintenance and operational videos to help you operate and maintain the machine. Access them by touching the video help icon here in the lower left. Select an area of the machine to view a video, or click here for a complete list. Please note that your favorite television programs are not available on this machine. Okay, enough talk. Let's get down to business. A great first step is to turn on the machine. You may be disappointed in the performance of the machine if you skip that step. You turn your machine on by turning the key to the on position. Now, choose the machine settings. Next, step on the operator platform. See this green go pedal? This is an on off switch. It is not a gas pedal. It's more like the safety lever on your lawnmower handle you have to hold down to keep it running. These slow blinking lights remind you to choose your direction of travel before you step on that green go pedal. If the direction arrows are blinking rapidly, it means you have not paid attention to this video and you are standing on the green go pedal like I just told you not to. Take your foot off the pedal to choose a direction. Now, step on the green go button and the machine will begin to move. Be careful to control your speed. If you need to stop quickly, take your foot off the go pedal. Controlling the speed of the machine is done by turning this green speed dial on the control panel. The slowest speed is an eye-watering seven feet per minute, denoted here by this turtle icon. The fastest speed, indicated by the quick and adorable rabbit, is 3.5 miles an hour. Don't worry about local dogs, you're unlikely to be mistaken for a rabbit. So, once you've selected the machine settings or chosen a zone and selected the appropriate travel speed for your environment, you're ready to go. Step on the machine, touch the big green button, wait for the scrub head to lower, and begin cleaning. When operating the machine, you will notice the machine is quick and nimble and also stable. The machine has a tight turning radius so it can clean easily, even in narrow spaces or tight corners. Use the right side of the machine to clean your walls. The head of the machine is offset to get close to edges efficiently. Keep in mind, most functions on this machine require you to be standing on the platform. So if something's not working, make sure you're standing on the platform. Also, keep in mind that standing on the platform makes you about five inches taller. While these five inches aren't gonna help me be able to dunk a basketball anytime soon, you'll wanna remember this as you go through doorways or into elevators. For really nasty floors, you may want to double scrub. When you double scrub, the scrub deck is dispensing solution and spinning, but the squeegee is in the up position. 
This allows cleaning solution to soak up the soil and for you to make multiple passes with the scrub head to agitate and release those soils. To put the machine in double scrub mode, loosen the double scrub star knob on the back of the squeegee assembly. Lower the caster wheel and re-tighten. This keeps the squeegee off the floor. Reverse the process when you're ready to vacuum up the water on the floor. Making sure your equipment is properly maintained at the end of your shift will help keep your machine running like a champ and also set up the next operator for success. You and I both know leaving an uncharged, dirty scrubber for the next operator may lead to some pretty nasty looks in the break room. Plus, payback is a, well, it's a thing you probably don't want to deal with. First is emptying the recovery tank. This is done by removing the recovery tank drain hose and then crimping the end of the hose. Trust me, don't forget that step. Lower the hose next to a drain. Make sure it's not pointing at your pants, also an important step to remember, and remove the cap. Slowly uncrimp the hose to allow the dirty water to flow out of the recovery tank. Now, rinse out the recovery tank with a spray hose and wipe it clean as necessary. This would be a good time to remove and clean the debris tray. The float shutoff screen should be checked and cleaned daily. To clean it, remove it and rinse it clean. When you are done cleaning the recovery tank, debris tray and float, leave the lid open. This will allow the recovery tank to quickly dry and not smell like my basement freezer full of fish after I accidentally unplugged it for two months. True story. <laughs> it's a good idea to drain the solution tank every day too. Just remove the side tube and carefully lower it to a drain. When the tank is empty, reattach it to the machine. You can do this at the same time you drain the recovery tank. After every cleaning shift, the squeegee should be inspected and cleaned. Use the same steps we covered for changing the squeegee blade. If the squeegee was not performing as you would expect, consider flipping or replacing the squeegee. At the end of each day, you should inspect and clean the scrub head skirt. This may require you to remove it by lifting the scrub deck and pulling the scrub head skirt to remove it. Reverse the process to get it back on. The last item on your list is to charge the batteries. This should be done at the end of every cleaning shift. Behind the access door is the charger cable. Just plug it into a properly grounded wall outlet. The charger will automatically begin charging and shut off when the batteries are fully charged. You will know it's charging as the battery indicator lights ripple back and forth during the charging cycle. Now you can unplug the cord and wrap it around the cord hooks. To maximize the runtime and life of the batteries, make sure the batteries are completely charged before using the machine. You've now learned the basics of successfully operating and maintaining your machine. One last reminder, if a function isn't working as you think it should, make sure you're standing on the platform since many of the functions require that. At Tenant Company, we know clean buildings are important. Kids need clean schools to learn. Clean hospitals give people confidence in the care they receive. Clean stores encourage customers to shop longer and more often. We also know that buildings don't clean themselves, and the care you take every day enables people to be their best in the spaces you make clean. We hope the work we do to create efficient and effective cleaning equipment helps make your tough job just a little bit easier. Thanks for watching and thank you for what you do.